All right, everyone, welcome to Unscripted from my still unnamed, unsponsored studios here in Hilliard, Ohio. But uh, those of you listening, that is going to change. Uh, a little housekeeping item very quickly. In the next few weeks, days, uh, we'll be making an announcement. So it will no longer be unnamed and unscripted. And Well, it'll still be unscripted. It just won't be unnamed and unsponsored. Okay. So uh, before my guest speaks today, let me go ahead and introduce himself. Huge honor today. Um, uh, Michael Thompson is a teacher and mentor and the author of a book called Search and Rescue, but also a book we will talk about today called The Heart of a Warrior. Uh, it's a guide for the hearts of men and women. He and his wife, Robin, are the founders of and directors of Zoe Ministries in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, it functions as a uh, both a spiritual medic team and also an outpost for men and women uh, to experience intimacy and connectedness uh, with God and with others. Um, they have been married since 1990, and he has he is the father of three daughters, Ashley, Hannah, and Abby. Uh, he and his family live in a redemptive community of friends and allies who work together to um, experience life together and offer life to all those whom God brings in the in their path. Um, they live in North there, North. I'm sorry, Durham, North Carolina. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Michael Thompson. Please, is there anything I missed there, or do you want to fill in any of the no. gaps? No, you, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, um, that's the official, um, introduction for sure. Um, okay. yeah, been in, been in Durham, North Carolina for about 22 years, uh, originally from Oklahoma, um, you know, came across, um, some different, uh, professions and ministry, uh, landed in the ministry, um, and ended up at Duke university. So that's what brought us this way was, um, with a campus ministry that, that uh, landed us there had had 11 years or so there loved it and uh, we can get some into more of the story but that's kind of how we got here and left left that space after about 17 years and then we started zoe in 06 uh and uh yeah we'll get into some of the backstory to how that started why that started and 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 what we're doing now with the heart of a warrior but yeah so that's that's what brought us out to this part of the world that's awesome. And I think I know we had a quick conference call with our buddy, Chris Maston. So let's go ahead and let's let's give a shout out to Chris Maston, because um, about two years ago, he started bugging me. Was it two years? It might have. I don't know how old the, how old the book is, so I don't want to miss. Yeah, uh-huh. so okay. so, so, yeah. so two years ago, this guy reads a book, my, my college roommate, my bestie, my best friend, my BFF, all that good stuff. <laughs> he reads this book and he starts texting and calling me saying, you got to get this book. You got to get this book. You got to get this book. And, and I was just in a place in life where I used to just read like crazy. And I was just in a place where it just, it had fallen by the wayside for me a bit. And I'm like, I will, I will, I will. And I, I never did. And then he kept bugging me. And then a year later, actually at one point, he actually, I believe he went to a retreat Conference, yeah, That's one of a, a conference, yeah, encounter weekends, yeah, heart of warrior encounter weekend, yeah. And he called me like last minute, like get on a plane, come meet me. <laughs> like, yeah, that doesn't happen. Like I can't do that quite as easily um, at the moment. So anyway, but uh, so I've been hearing about the book for a long time. Um, you were kind enough to send me a copy of the book. Um, I have, in full disclosure, read some, but not all. And uh, and right now I'm reading it through highlights because there's a lot of them. Uh, this is really hitting home with me. And um, I think, as we have mentioned and talked in the past, um, the the thing that stuck out to me right away when Chris called me was, or or you know, started talking about the book was, well, it sounds like Wild at Heart. I, I read that book. I'm I'm good, you know. And and as I'm reading this, this is not Wild at Heart. Um, related and, and similar, but not the same. So can you touch on that right away? So anybody that's listening to this that thinks like yeah. I did and says, Heart of Warrior, that sounds yeah. like well at heart. What's the difference? Yeah, good question. Um, difference, uh, you know, John John really tapped into um, a, a place in men's souls and men's hearts and their minds that um, this, this idea about um, bearing God's image, about uh, every man has a, a, a battle to fight, an adventure to live, and a beauty to rescue. Those are really right. big tenets yep. for him. Yep. And, and I agree. I mean, I, I, I was greatly impacted by um, Wild at Heart and, and Eldridge and, and subsequent books, you know, that happened after um, his, uh, his first book's release. So um, for me, in my journey, so Wild at Heart has a significant place, Aaron, it does. And, yeah. and it, I would say it was part of what woke me up. It was, it was a significant part of, of what pulled me 
to um, men, men's lives, men's, uh, men's initiatives. And, and it actually was a significant, uh, I'll say recovery part of my story. And, and it, my, my recovery story is less, Aaron, about being, um, uh, you know, being um, what I would call maybe really down and out and, and needing to restoration that way. My story is more like needing to recovery from Phariseeism, mm. needing to recover from religiosity, yeah. needing to recover from a very small box of, of, of uh, in the evangelical ranks and, and, and therefore, um, yeah, come out, of, come out of that into a much larger story. John did that. So there's parts of that that, that have to come with me, right, into, into Heart of a Warrior. There's pieces of that that... Sure that wild at heart affected and uh, impacted me. So, but I think some of the key differences have to do with, um, I felt like after a decade or so of, of actually teaching wild at heart, sharing wild at heart, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned search and rescue in the intro. One of the things that I wanted to explore more deeply and then ended up writing about it was I felt like men of faith don't have the coordinate down very well of the larger story that our story's in. Right. And so that's, that's why search and rescue was written. It was, it was in the years of uh, Lord of the Rings, this middle earth. It, those were in the years of the matrix, Neo and the matrix. Yeah. Those were in the years of Narnia. I mean, yes, Lewis wrote those years ago, but those films were coming out. They, they resonated deeply with me. And I, and I felt like I was lost in, in a smaller story. And what I, what I mean by that, I mentioned some of this in Heart of a Warrior. Mm -hmm. When the story's about you, Aaron, and it's revolving around you, you're in a pretty small story. Yeah. So to, to graduate to the larger story where there are, right, there are uh, orcs and elves, right? There is a white witch. There is, yeah. um, there is evil there that does not sleep, as they talk about Mordor, that, that there is a kingdom of darkness and it's up to something. Most men who, who I ran with and who I know uh, in faith, they, they know that it exists. They just don't know how it works. Right. And if you don't know how it works, it, it means you're naive or you're ignorant, one of the two. And so some of that's in Heart of Aware, but that was why I wrote, I had to write Search and Rescue. I wanted men to go further in to the landscape of the larger story so that they could see their story in light of it. Yeah. And, and so Heart of a Warrior captured some of that too. I brought that forward, but particularly Heart of a Warrior I had to write because what God was taking me into and what he was renovating in my heart, in my life, in my forties was uh, belovedness hmm. and being a beloved son. Yeah. John talks about being an image bearer. I love that. I think that's one of the coolest things that we can get our arms around as men and, and women that we are created in his image and he wants his image bearers back. Yeah. So we have the, the, you know, the salvation story. We have the rescue mission of Jesus to bring us back to the kingdom of God, you know, to reclaim us, to, to restore us, uh, to redeem us, all those great words. And so, but for me, I, I, what I was experiencing was um, I knew a lot about God and I knew a lot about God's love. And I think I had been, I subscribed pretty um, at a pretty young age that it's my job to love God. Mm. It's my duty to love God back. Right. And, and what happened to me in my forties was, was uh, God said, no, no, no. I, 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 I want to, I want to, I want to get the cart back behind the horse and mm. I want to love you. Mm. I want you to experience my love and know my love and know my voice so, you know, those were concepts that, that, that Eldridge and Wild at Heart began. Yeah. But then I started in some of my own journey, right? I mean, how long can you stick with one book, right? right. Like Wild at Heart. right. And, and thank God that John wrote it. I mm -hmm. am, I'm so thankful to him that that, yeah. that book has the impact that it's had in the world, but in my right. world, you right. know, in, in my space. And it was very significant in having me leave the ministry that I was a part of and starting Zoe. I yeah. felt like I felt like I could do my job over there, but there's a bigger world that I want to explore theologically, experientially, 
And, and so that's where Search and Rescue and then Heart of a Warrior came out of my walk and my journey with God, my experience with God, where he wanted to show it. You remember, remember when we were young, show and tell? Yeah. He wanted to show and tell me yeah. that, that he loves me yeah. and that he's crazy about me and that he, he wants to be with me. So when, that, when, the, when the cart got back behind the horse there and I was experiencing what it was to be a beloved son in the kingdom and to be called by different names, you know, like you're, you know, some guys have fathers who are affectionate that way. They, right. They're known right. by right. names within their families, you know, and, and God was starting to do that with me and beginning to enjoy his voice um, and hear his voice and know his voice amongst the crowd mm-hmm. of, of voices that are, are, you know, chirping and many of them lurking to try to get my attention. I was so familiar with the enemy's voice even even in my ministry context and it didn't make sense to me Aaron that I, I couldn't know and experience the, God's voice mm. that just didn't make sense right. as, a, as a kingdom man or as a Christian and so um, so that five six year journey is what was the evidence for me to say I don't think I'm I don't think I'm alone here I think I believe that there's men like me who have missed out on being loved. Mm -hmm. Um, I just had a guy in the office just before the call, just had a man in here to to talk and explore. And he came in and he came in because of this, like you read in the, you read in the, um, in the introduction. I mean, we're kind of a a medic, a spiritual medic outpost, if you will, to, so people come across us and we come across them. And, and, and he was one who came in the office just because, and to begin this conversation, and I asked him, I said, do you, you know, do you understand what you were made for? Mm. And, the, and the Christian answer that I, I had growing up, I, I said, don't answer. I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is, this is one of those rhetorical, I, I don't want you to answer, but I'm going to tell you. But the Christian answer, Aaron, that I knew growing up was service. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that to serve God, right. you know, um, it's not a bad role but it's really not the role yeah. that we were created for. And so in Heart of a Warrior, I, I wanted to, to bring forth, bring forward the, the weightiness and the significance of you were created to be loved by God mm-hmm. and others. If you go to the great commandment, when Jesus is asked, what's the greatest commandment? That's where he goes. Be in, right. The better translation is be in love with God, in love yeah. with God and one another. Love God, love one another. So anyway, that, those were things that I hadn't experienced in my 40 years of Christianity, uh, born into the church, born into faith, kind of had an inheritance that way, like, like some do, um, yeah. accepted Christ into my life a couple hundred times along the way. <laughs> right, absolutely. Uh, yep. You know what that means. Haven't we all? Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. so, so yeah, for me, um, I, I really wanted to... Um, explore and then and then bring that exploration to other men what if i have the father's heart wrong for me what if i'm actually not a sinner but i'm actually a beloved son who who hasn't who who hasn't quite got his game together yet right right Right. who hasn't quite got it all sorted out Mm -hmm. but my identity is in the kingdom and my identity and my worth and my value is has been has been declared by him i want to walk in that and that's what I, that's what I wanted to write and felt like, um, and, and, and wonderfully it has resonated with men, um, that if you put the bar here, it's amazing how men will reach for it. Yeah. If you put the bar here, it's amazing how they'll stoop to it. Mm. So here's, here's a sinner. Here's a beloved son. Here's a saint. This is who you are in the kingdom in yeah. Christ, through Christ, by the work of Christ. This is who you are. And so the invitation is to know that. Not just theologically, not just, I mean, the verses are important. Memorize them all. Memorize right, them all. Right. But if you're not encountering and experiencing the love of God, the affection of God, the Father's voice, uh, the King's presence, and, and the Holy Spirit's guidance, and, and those, even, even particularly, I think, um, as, as you experience more and more of God, you're going to actually know him in all three of the, of the, trini- of the Trinity. You're going to know mm-hmm. and experience the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. And they all, have their, they all have their own way. They all have their own voice. 
And what if we had more men who were walking in, in intimacy like that? Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a game changer. hundred percent. And I, wow, there's so much, um, to unpack there. There's a lot. And I have a feeling you the, the book fills in the gaps because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things that you mentioned along the way there. And there's so many that that um that I thought of as you were talking in just the the little bit that I've read so far. Um, one of the places, well, yeah, let me start there. And, and I apologize, this is unscripted, so I don't have notes. And that's I that's cool. Take notes, I, I, that, when we talked, I thought <laughs> I asked you, I said, Well, yeah, if you need to send me any show notes, then you said. There's no show notes. <laughs> yeah, there's no show notes. And I should have it. It would be much more polished. But oh, um, this is the way to do it. This, this is a I don't want show notes. I want to be able to hear what you said and, and I want to listen to what you had to say. I love and it. And then I, you know, and that's so that's my first thought was last night I was reading, and um, one of the things that, and you'll actually know where I was in the book, um, but while I was reading, you were talking about being at a conference and um, a speaker coming, a men's conference. And, mm -hmm. and a guy coming out and doing, you know, what all men's conferences do. And the guy was great. It had nothing to do with the speaker being bad or, yeah. or they didn't do a good job. And the music was great and everything was great. And they, I think he said like a one hour, you know, did his thing kind of a, almost like a locker room speech, but then you had to go yeah. out on the field and, you know, and I think, I think, you know, that, 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 that resonated with me having been to a, a lot of those and they're great. There's nothing right. wrong. I don't think we're saying there's anything wrong with those. Right. Um, almost like wild at heart. It was like, okay, now what? I think is the question is now what? And it feels like as I was starting to read the book, you're digging into the now what? Um, yeah. So that, that was my first thought. And, and you can yeah. correct if I'm, if I'm not on the right path there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the other thing that I thought of, and as you were speaking, especially as a father of daughters, I have two myself and I have a son. So I, you know, I, but when you say the word intimacy, what a, I think most guys, like, we don't know what to do with that word. You know what I mean? If we're married, it, we're intimate with our wives. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we probably think of intimacy like something you get at Victoria's Secrets or in a, in a part of the mall that you don't want to be yeah. seen in too often, right? It, you know, I mean, I don't mean that. Right? I'm not trying to be mean or, or funny. I'm being honest. It, it, yeah. it feels uncomfortable, I think is my point. It's uncomfortable for me, the word intimacy, right? And, and I, so when, when you say that God wants to know you intimately, I think for a lot of guys, and again, I haven't got through the book, you probably go through this. And if not, let me know. But I feel like when you say the word intimacy or God wants to know us intimately, it, it feels weird for me because I don't, I don't know. I don't, my, I treat my daughters with a different, you know, as a dad of daughters, you know, this, right. It's, it's, it's girl dad, like Kobe, you know, even though she played basketball, she was still girl dad. He, he had, and then you have your son and we're supposed to raise our sons to be tough and we're supposed to be, yeah. so there's not an intimacy um, I don't know. I'm, I'm ranting now, but I, I guess I'm trying to put all the pieces together and I'm yeah. sure you do a lot of that in the book. Are you, are you tracking with me I, and how can you help yeah. with that? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I, I need to come to see you. <laughs> no, I, I think, I think everything you've said is, is, is such honest observation and such honest, um, you know, this is, this is what I've known this to be. And so, uh, you know, I, I think you do, there's certain things that we need to reclaim. Um, you know, we need to reclaim um, our status in the kingdom. We need to reclaim our identity in Christ. And again, there's scriptures about this stuff. But what I'm talking about, Aaron, is experiencing it with God, experiencing right. it with him. So there's a there's an old quote, an old uh, uh, proverb, never give a sword to a man who can't dance. Right. Um, you know, that that we yes, there's there's a warrior. And, and this is back to that, that locker, that this is back to that, that conference, you know, these guys would have ran out of there. They're, they were ready to take the hill, whatever hill it was. Didn't know and what it was. Right? And that's not, and that's not a bad thing. No. But in, in the way that the kingdom of darkness works, works is they don't mind a pep rally. What they mind is you taking back ground in your heart. Yeah. You, what they mind is, is you, is you losing beautifully, I want to use this word on purpose, you actually losing pieces and parts of your false self and flesh, and you gaining your trueness, who right. you are in the kingdom, how you're known in the kingdom. Yeah. So, so I, I, and that's how I felt when I wrote about that. These, you know, I, it was a good message. It was encouraging. Yeah. 
but but how long will it last? And I'm just I'm just a man in the crowd amongst a men, an ocean of men in a much larger crowd that I'm not the only one asking that question. You know, how long can I keep this discipline up? How long can I keep this practice up? And so, you know, something about intimacy um, to reclaim it or to define it. Maybe we do that first. Yeah. What, what we mean by intimacy is knowing and being known. Right. The deeper you're known, that you know someone and, and known by them, the more intimate you are with that person. So, of course, as God created this, this sexual act, this we put intimacy to mm -hmm. that. Right. But there's a lot more to intimacy than those 20 minutes. Yeah. Or yeah. 25 or we're unscripted, <laughs> right? I mean, however long you you, you know, <laughs> however long it goes, there's there's an intimacy uh -huh. that actually that's supposed to be the fireworks at the finale at the end of the day or the yeah. end of whatever the, yeah. but that space of intimacy, um, that's just one element of, of, of a reflection of knowing and being known between yeah. two hearts. Yeah. So oh. Jesus takes us into this. He's the one to blame for the idea of intimacy, oneness. And this is how we say it in the book. You are made for intimacy, oneness, and connectedness with God. So those other two words help in, in taking kind of the intimacy out of the sexual category right, and, and actually into the relational, a, a bigger, broader relational element. So the best part to go, the best place to go for the, the idea, the experience of, of this with Jesus and the father is in John 14, 15, 16, and 17. There's a series of chapters there that John is, is giving us a really consecutive, like, it's, it's not like, okay, and then they left here and went there. You know, I mean, this is a, Jesus is coming down the home stretch of his time with them. And you get the high priestly prayer in John 17. He talks to them in John uh, 15, 16 about the Holy Spirit that's coming. It's the only place in the scriptures that it's this pronounced where you have all three characters of the Trinity in the scripture. Mm -hmm. The son is talking about the spirit and prays to the father about the spirit that's coming about him leaving. I mean, it's there, all the key players are there and he yeah. prays for the believers. He prays for his friends. He prays for the disciples. And he says that they would be one mm -hmm. like we are one. Right. That they would know you like I know you. Yeah. So that that's kind of our, our reclaiming and recapturing this word intimacy for brotherhood, yeah, for family, for fatherhood, for you know, for friendships, all, all of that. You know, so if intimacy is knowing and being known, and here's the kicker, and if you're actually loved to the degree that you're known. Right. Then, then it's the longing of our hearts to be known, to be in. We, if we're created, like I was saying about it, you are created for for intimacy, oneness, and connectedness with God and each other. And if you understand that, now you understand our heartache, and you understand our hope. Mm -hmm. And so, those are concepts that that I wanted to to bring to men, particularly that hey, because the subtitle of the book, right, is before you can become a warrior. The heart of a warrior, the subtitles, before you can become the warrior, you have to become the beloved son. Yeah. If you don't know the love of the father, you will get your tail kicked right. by the enemy. You'll run out of that, uh, out of that um, pep rally and, and it'll be a few days and your wife will say something, your son or daughter will do something, your boss will say something and boom, your false self is triggered. Now you're false self dominant, which most guys are. So this creature that's not you is is running and operating within you and infecting the whole system mm. and that's a big part of heart of a warrior is identifying this thing that's not you yeah but that that is at work in your operating system based on all of your stories and all of the days of your life and we asked it, uh, this at our conference and and you know it's uh, it's another kind of tongue-in-cheek question so what are the odds that you've interpreted your life accurately Mm. Wow. Wow. 
well, there you go. Then there is a not strong likelihood. There's a guarantee that there could be some lies about you, about God, and about others in the operating system. Absolutely. How deep and how far those lies work is how powerful that false self can be. Mm -hmm. And most men have never even identified it, much less dis had gone to God to dismantle it. Yeah. It's almost as if we've made stew. Or, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so scripted. This is a uh, my my and Chris can probably tell you my my mentality or my mental capacity. Uh, but it's almost like we've made stew our whole lives. Um, where in and then that question says, "How's it taste?" Right? Like, how, how are the ingredients? And I bet most guys would be like, "Ah, oh, it's too salty," or "It's not." There's not enough of this. There's not enough of that. We've we've put all these to your point. We've put all these things. And all these uh, experiences and memories and hurt and uh, frustrations and anger and uh, what my dad said, what my mom did, what, what, whatever it is, like there's for every guy, it's probably different. Um, and but we're all trying to make this this pot of stew. And that's I think that question is, how, how is it? Oh, you know, and how, how did it turn out? How, yeah. how did it turn out? Because yeah. most, like, and to your point, I think most guys would, there's not a lot of guys that say, man, it's awesome. It's so good. Yeah. It's the perfect mix. No, something's not right in that stew. And we all know it. Um, it now it's what, how do we get to what did, you know, was it not a good base? And I'm, this isn't a cooking show, but yeah, the yeah, point yeah. You, you, you get the analogy. Um, yeah. and let me, there's a line and I have it right in front of me. Um, you said a beloved son is one who experiences the unconditional love of his father in a way that deeply impacts him and leaves him with. These were powerful. Nothing to hide, nothing to prove, nothing to fear. I highlighted all three because I personally, and, and if anybody's listening to this and you got, the, you, if you've got the, the, <laughs> the all three, congratulations. Yeah, you got the trifecta. But if yeah. if you got the thing, thank you. I knew there was a word there. If if you've got all three, man, congratulations, because you you probably nailed it. But honestly, I don't know if I know a guy that's got all three of those, if we're honest, yeah. if we're brutally honest, um, yeah. where there's nothing to fear, nothing to prove, and nothing to hide. I have a feeling that most guys are going to, if, if they were in an intimate setting, uh, again, there's that word intimate, right? But if we were in a comfortable setting, Safe setting, the walls yeah. were down a safe setting. I got to think that everybody's not going to be able to check all three of those boxes. Right. And, and yet when you think about the promise of Jesus that, that we can have life and have it to the full, mm -hmm. that perfect love casts out fear, yep. you know, that, that we won't have to prove ourselves. We're, we're, we'll have settled hearts, yeah. you know, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Um, and, you know, those first questions in the garden are, are every man's question, right? Every man's garden, every man encounters those questions. Aaron, where are you? Yeah. Right. And the second question is who told you that? Mm. That's really good. So we, that's the invitation of the heart of a warrior is, is to go back, not stay there, but to go back. And yes, there can be some painful things back there yeah. but to go back there and see the, sh the way that they might have shaped you um i i know there's men who are very aggressive but that doesn't mean they're not hiding all right maybe they're aggressive probably because they are hiding uh, exactly and and i've uh, and i and i know i know those guys right i know some of those guys all of and us i know the other guys that are passive right and, and, you know, it, that, that might be easy to look at, why, but why are they hiding? Why this thing that we call our personality, you know, and that we've created a whole bunch of tests and, you know, uh, human resources departments and, and different things to, you know, honestly, they can give you a great reading on your false self, how you hide, how you, as, as Eldridge said, how do you pose? Mm -hmm. He calls it the poser. The poser right. Um, uh, um, the uh, I'm trying to think of the, the author um, who calls it the imposter. John Lynch talks about the masks mm -hmm. that we wear. Mm -hmm. um, so if these characters exist, the poser, the great imposter, the, the masked man, right. and I mean, I'm not writing anything new, <laughs> just recycling the reality of how does this look and how does this work and, and where does it come from 
And what if you didn't have to use such crappy ingredients for this stew? <laughs> Thank you, you know, for what, bringing what, my what if, what if, what if, <laughs> yeah. what if we, what if we really could get the good stuff? Right. The best and, meat, the best, and where the do best you get it? And where, where do you get it? So you I get a recipe. Yeah. So here you just thank you for the yes. So I don't want to borrow from your recipe. Right. I don't want to use your ingredients. And I don't want you to be the critic or the approval of mine. Mm -hmm. There's one opinion that really matters. And most men don't know yeah. how good that opinion is of them. Yeah. How, how, how lovingly good that that opinion is. The vote's been cast. Yeah. You are valuable. You wow. are significant. Wow. Your worth, right? This, uh, this is in the book. What has eBay taught us? What's eBay taught us? The value of anything is what? Whatever you're willing to pay for. It. There you go. <laughs> right. God, yeah. God was the highest bidder. Yes. Wow. And, and so we don't, we don't have to, we can't be any more valuable. Right. We, we can't make our worth any more significant. But what we don't do is experience that. And yet we go around panhandling all over the place. Would you give me my worth? Would you give me mm. my value? Would mm -hmm. you let me know I'm significant? Would you give me a like? Mm. It's just, it, it's, it's in us to do because we're made for that. Yeah. We're made for intimate relationships. So what does it look like if we can go to the unlimited supply and the one who made us for himself and one another. So that's the, back to that cart before the horse. Those are things that, it wasn't just me, you know, uh, I, I gotta confess, it wasn't me, um, you know, pouring over some theological works or, and, and kind of organizing that. I, 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 and if, as you read it, there's a lot of personal encounters with God. Yeah. And I want that for men. I can't be the exception. There's no way. Right. You know, at 40, 40, 45, 46, 48, that I'm the exception. Now, I do think he's, I'm, I'm an exception in some ways because he's told me that, but I think you are too. And what if right. every man knew that they were exceptional in the father's eyes and that unconditional love, most of us have known only conditional love because yeah. that's, how, that's what the world tends to offer. And if you're going to other image bearers for your significance and worth, they, it's like cars sharing gas. Sooner or later, you're going to run, you're going to run out. Right. Um, and, and not be able to support the neediness of somebody else's um, desire to be loved and wanted, invited and belong. Man, it's, I can't wait to get to the rest of the book uh, because there's a lot, there's so much that um, I don't know about anybody listening. I can, I'm going to be honest. I'll be unscripted and be uh, vulnerable enough because I'll give the gift of going second and tell you there's a lot in here I need to read. Um, you know, and I was a wild heart guy. I could probably recite you the whole book. I love I the book. Too. I love, I love it what he made the book, but at the same time, it's been a few years since I read it. You know, you, you drift and, and, and you, you get caught up in, as you were talking, I was thinking about, it. I think it's confusing for us. You watch the Simpsons and Homer Simpson is, you know, he's a moron. I mean, he, you know, he's, you know, and, and then you watched a Disney, you know, your kids watch a Disney show and the dad's always either working or he's just sitting on the couch or he's, you know, he's, and I want to say Hollywood's almost devalued the, the dad role of, you know what I mean? Of being a warrior. They're always the guy that just, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know if that's fair to paint that picture or whatever, but I just feel like we're, we're confused. We're confused with what am I supposed to be? How am I a great dad? Cause I don't think there's anybody that doesn't want to be a great dad, especially yeah. the day you, you bring a child into this world and you hold that child you want to be a great dad, but none of us again have the recipe. What is a great dad? Define that because, and I think you're saying that God defines that for you. You know, he's been a great dad. He is a great father. And, and I think so many of us need to claim that relationship first. It sounds like what you're really saying oh, yeah. um, that before we can really become any of those things, we've got to claim that relationship first, because that's ultimately the one that is the, the yeah. best model. Of, yeah. of being a great dad, not Disney and not Homer Simpson. Yeah, I, man, I love what you're saying. That's a whole can of worms because um, honestly, for me, my view of the father for the, the, the father for 40 years, it, it had some projection from my earthly father. Sure. And I think that's what Eldridge brings forward. And I think we can't, we can't ignore that in, yeah. in even today that your encounter and experience with authority, with masculine authority, with, mm -hmm. with father, with dad is, is going to have an influence on, on your, 
your perceptions of, of but you, you talked about these caricatures mm-hmm. uh, from Disney and Homer Simpson. There's a reason why not only they get away with that, there's a reason why they, they work. We, we've given, men have given enough data and stories and, and have, have been checked out. I mean, the, the fatherhood piece that you're talking about, it has a lot of blemishes on it. Right. I mean, we've earned it. Almost, and you, right? We've earned it. Thank you. That's a great, I mean, unfortunately, the pain of that, of that statement that, you know, toxic masculinity, passive mm-hmm. masculinity, we, mm-hmm. the record's clear, you know, right. men have been, men have been guilty of, of this kind of behavior. Sure. And, and I believe this with all my heart. If, if men are a big part of the problem in this world, then what if men could be a big part of the solution? Solution. Oh, absolutely. If, they can, if we can get it's our heart proven. back. So you're, you, talk, you talk about orientation. If, if we're a man with nothing to hide, nothing to prove, nothing to fear, you know, the, the warrior mentality, I, I know that sounds Viking and I know it sounds brave heart. I mean, the cover has the sword of. of absolutely. Wallace, right. Right. Know? But right. early in that story, early in that story, what Wallace is asked, you know, he said, I've come home to raise crops and have a family. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to get caught up in this thing. Right. This thing comes to his door. And I'm saying to every man, this thing has come, to, to, your come door. to your door. Right. Evil, evil, long shanks, all the evil characters that you hear and see. Disney's like you brought Disney's made a fortune on this storyline yes. of good versus evil. Yep. Characters who don't know who they are, who have to go through the heroic journey to become something more than they were when the when the two hours started. Right. And they encounter evil. It it hates them. It opposes them. It's envious of them. Where do you think they got all that story? Yeah. Why do you think we resonate with it so deeply, Aaron? It's in us. Yeah. Our hearts know that Disney has a substance that sometimes we don't necessarily connect on Sunday mornings. Not blaming anybody, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm saying- It's the truth. Why can you remember more lines in a Disney story than you can from Colossians, Philippians, or, right. or Hebrews? Right. So my, and because we're in a story, our hearts are made for story, for narrative. Yeah. And yes, we need the facts and yes, we need the truth. But the truth is far more than the passages or the verses on a page, the truth, yeah. Jesus says, he's the truth. He's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. So encountering him, that's what the scriptures are pointing to. And I think our fatherhood is in, is in pretty bad shape because of the last 30, 40, 50 years. And, and the generations, you know, we're sitting on the 40s and 50s and 60 year olds, that's kind of our, our posse, our crowd. Right. And we are looking back going crap i was ill prepared i was ill trained i I was ill informed so and i'm not blaming the grandpas and i mean some might say that they're the great generation sure i don't know man the next generation it was pretty crazy after them that's right yeah the 80s you know now now they might have been patriots and citizens right you know that that went back to work and that built and, and that built this country and whatever else you want to give them credit for but as fathers you know, what is it that every boy and girl is asking? Mm-hmm. They're, they're all, you know, do you see me and do you love what you see? Do you right. want to be with me? And, and so here's the crazy part. I don't think we grow out of that. Mm-mm. No, I, I think we always want to hear well done. Even on the day that we arrive. That's our, it should be our goal is to hear well done. And whether it's this yeah. side of heaven or, you know, hopefully the other side of heaven. There, I'm, When you're talking, I was thinking about, and again, not to go back to the 80s, but there was a, a, a singer named Twyla Paris. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard the song, The Warrior is a Child. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember hearing that song as a child. And it always resonated with me. And it still does to this day. I think I've used it with my own kids. And I think my wife and I have talked about it at times. And I think I've used it with others. And the, the lyric was, you know, they don't know that when I, that I go running home when I fall down. And they don't know who picks me up when no one is around. I drop my sword. And look up for a smile because deep inside this heart, the warrior is a child. And I, the fact that I can still recite that <laughs> yeah, and haven't heard that song. Man, I love that. That was awesome. 
but that's yeah, the truth, man. right? It's the truth. It's and the that truth. is, I and I think that's your that. that's your book that I've seen is we first have to recognize we're a child. Yeah. We're a child. before we can go and put a pick up the sword and pick up the shield. To your point, the 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 pep rally, all those things. Before all that, we have to recognize that we are a child, and deep inside us is a child that wants to be, that wants to look up and smile and see the dad say, "Well done." Now put your pick up your sword and shield and I'll go kick some tail. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you you know, I see you, I recognize you, I know you, I love you, and yeah. you know, I approve of you. Now yeah. now go to war. But 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 so many yeah. guys are rushing the hill without knowing those things. Is it to summarize? Is yeah. that about right? It, it is. I just want to give you, I just want to bring one edit to the word knowing, you know, because yeah. we we do fall pretty heavy to the academic. Yeah. So there are men that know the verses that say that. Yeah. That that you are a beloved son. You, you know, you you are you you are an overcomer. Um, you are victorious. I mean, those are scriptures that we hang our hats on. But where but where our hearts hang is in encounters and experiences with the Father. Yeah. If you don't hear him say that, then then there's this there's this other voice. So what what I what I was trying to get to earlier and, and maybe miss Aaron was that idea that what the enemy is going to try to whisper to you is that you're not yeah and he's got a lot of files let me get my hand in the screen he's got a lot of files back there to call yeah. upon when yeah. you weren't right right and, and wow. so and so where where those files go where do they go they they go to the basement or they go to the attic and but they stay in the system. Mm -hmm. And, and because you encountered diminishment, you encountered uh, mishandling, you encountered shame, mm -hmm. you encountered fear, you en we encountered those things. They became very true because yeah. you encountered them. Right. So the concept is, well, if you encounter Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, if you encounter them, they become more true. Yes. Yes. So you are forgiven. How have you experienced? You use the word no. So I... I I, the word is good, but no is so associated with academics. Yes. Yeah. And so where my teammates and I love, we want to, we want to use the word experience. Yes. We almost they're not synonymous because one means an encounter. Mm -hmm. One means, um, I was there. I saw it. I felt it. Yeah. I heard him. Yeah. That's different than I know, I know that exists or I know that's true. I experienced it to be true. Right. And so you can, we can know a lot of this. This is why we see, and I'm just going to pick on them for a second. This is why pastors who fall morally, I'm describing with you what happened. Yeah. They know the truth, but the truth clearly hasn't set them free. They know they went to school. They have degrees on this book, but what's at work more powerfully within them than the concepts that they know is the is their interpretation of the experiences and encounters that they've had with the world mm -hmm. the flesh and the devil yeah. there's an unholy trinity at work in this environment that we're in and if you don't know how they're working and what they're up to then you're either probably captive pow unconscious coma and yet highly functioning because you got to go to work today yeah you know? that's right that's right <laughs> yeah but but that's and I'm not saying that we're that it's 24 seven torture. Yeah. Some people, some people live in 24 seven tor torture that, you know, that are very, very under the influence of mm -hmm. trauma and pain mm -hmm. and sorrow that all the degrees they could get, all mm -hmm. the accolades they could get it are not going to fix that. Right. I just, right. You, you remember the scene uh, in Rudy, mm -hmm. right? He's coming out. He, he, he's, he's going to quit the team. I just wanted to see my dad. There it is. There it is. Yeah. It's huge. And, 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 the, and, the, and the groundskeeper says, you're so full of crap. <laughs> right. That's right. You have been at the, this university and you have played on the greatest team and then if, if you don't, if you don't know now that you belong here, then nothing's going to teach you that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then in that scene, he said, and I ought to know. Right. Because I played here too. Yeah. And I was just so, so full of, I mean, oh, whoa, there, there it is. Yeah. 
And so go back. So the voice of experience says, go back. Don't do this. Yeah. And, and he goes back and he, you know, puts his helmet on and, and gets back at it. And, and we have this story that we love about overcoming and about underdogs. I mean, every time I see it, yes, when that I hear the soundtrack, <laughs> you, know, you know what's coming and you That's can't right. not tear up. Why? We're, we're overcomers. We're yeah. underdogs. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we, that's our story, mm -hmm. but we get a little lost in the story. We, yeah. we, we, we misunderstand some of the good that God's up to in our lives. And that's a big, we talk about that in the book. You know, I love that you, I, I'm glad that you hit stop on nothing to hide, nothing to prove, nothing to fear. Those are huge. And that's, so that's an oriented man. Mm -hmm. An oriented man is a man who knows who he is, where he is, and the good that God's up to in his life. And the result of that who you are, where you are, and the good that God's up to your life. The result of that is a man like Jesus who lives with nothing to hide, nothing to prove, and nothing to fear. Yeah. That, that is a, that's, that's six chapters <laughs> right there in a nutshell. I keep coming back to the desert when he was tested. Yeah. And I think it brings it full circle. As, and again, I'm not, I don't know if I'm an expert by any means, but I keep coming back to that because he had spent time with the father when he was, when those voices, when the devil said, look, man, I, just jump off this thing. You can have the whole thing. It's all yours. Just do it, you know? And yeah. then he came back with scripture because he knew the father intimately. And now we come back to that word intimacy again. But yeah. I think because of his relationship, Jesus knew who he was in the toughest testing times yeah. and stood firm 100%. to look at the devil. You know, the devil tried new things, tried different ways, tried different tactics, tried different wording. Like you said, where, where are you? You know, did he really say that? And now I think the devil was doing that in his testing as, you know, and Jesus each time. Yeah. Because he, of that intimacy, he knew who he was. He knew who yeah. his father was. He had, again, nothing to hide. Yeah. And all those things. So the two, two things that you are a hundred percent, that, that is a story we have to unpack for just one minute. Number one, it's, it's the baptism by his cousin, John, when the father breaks radio silence and says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. There's a proud moment right. between father and son. Yes. That is faithfulness and, 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 and his stepping into the mission even further yeah. through the baptism. Um, and, and the Holy Spirit des uh, descends. I mean, there's, there's the other place that we see all three characters in a moment. Right. Right. Yeah. That boom. Yep. The timeline changed. Mm -hmm. The timeline changed, and and here comes uh, the the great rescue, and and he begins to then take the ministry onto the offensive. But he but right after that chapter closes, it says, "Then the spirit of the Lord led him into the wilderness." Right. So he's led there into the octagon. He's led there into the place, and then you said it. The first two, I think it's the two of the three. The first two. Satan says, if you are the right. son of God, what is that? Yeah. But, a, but a challenge to your point about your identity. So if yeah. you don't know who you are, if you're not settled there, if he hasn't shown and told you who you are, some of our fathers did that. Some of them did. But sooner or later, you, you graduate. Yeah. Their words still matter. But man, life will kick you in the yeah. You. <laughs> yes. you know and so now you've got a wife and you've got right. kids and you've yeah. got a mortgage and and so there's things that you know most of us have moved beyond our father's words and presence and right. i wish that wasn't true I, I i still want to hear my dad's yes words and need to and i still want my dad's presence i look forward to i mean COVID has kicked us all in the ears if, if, yeah. if nothing else other than our our inability to be together. Yeah, we've you know, lost is, years. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it, it is it has taken a toll on us. But yep. you're my so what does it look like to for a for a 20 something or a 30 something, 40 or 50 year old something man to turn to the father for fathering? Right. Because you know, like I do, I've never been here before. That that is just about true every day. Yes if not every two or three days, right? <laughs> I mean, my landscape, the seas, the wind, it, it, it's all moving and it's all changing. And so who am I now? Father, who am I in this? 
who do you say that I am? Yes. That's a beautiful question. And we call it prayer, but I ask him. Who do you say? I, I want to I want to invite men to ask God to show and tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. And then buckle up. Right. You know, ready, because yeah. there's voices back there that want to tell you, yeah, well, this is what you are. Yeah. Be careful. If you hear what you are, that's different yeah. than who you are. The enemies are going to have a spin on what you are. They're going to accuse you. They're going to bring up guilt. They're going to bring up shame. They're going to bring up things from the, from either you did or things that were done to you that in some way, shape or form disqualify you from the love of God. Mm. Impossible. That's impossible. Yeah. But it isn't impossible if you believe the lies that it does. Right. If you believe the lies, it's, it's possible to be separated from God. Yeah. You feel separated from God. But, but that's, 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 a, that's another book, maybe another subject. But yeah. you're right in that Jesus, it was about his identity and he was settled. He knew who he was. Mm -hmm. And so much so that when it comes to the garden, you know, we're back in the garden and he says, if there's another way to do this, Father, I'm, yeah, I'm in. I mean, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So talk about a warrior. I mean, yeah. to, to, and I had Jesus wrong. I really had him for years, Aaron, as a pacifist. Yeah. I did not, I did not identify him with the courage and the, the fierceness, the fierce love that he had that took him to the cross. And so if you misunderstand who he is, you can't, there's no way you can get right. Yeah. If you misunderstand what the father's like, there's, there's no way you can receive his love. So there's a lot to explore sure. and, and, and to see recovered and reclaimed and, and to break ties with those things that the, that the enemy has, has put strategic things that he's put. And in each man, it's a custom, it's a custom suit, man. Yeah. I mean, we can share some shame, guilt, and fear, hide, prove, you know, we, we can share some things in common, but but the false self suit is a custom suit. Mm. They worked back here in the story. So it needs a custom deliverance, a custom rescue, a custom freedom right. Right. Uh, from God to, to, to bring us out of that darkness and into the light. Well, this has been awesome. I could, I could, I swear I say this every podcast, but the guests are just so uh, life-giving to me and I could literally do this all day um, mm -hmm. but I have a feeling that this has been like going to uh, see a movie and seeing a trailer and you're like I gotta I gotta see that one that's one I gotta see yeah. and on your way out you buy a ticket to the one that you saw the trailer for um, I have a feeling anybody listening to this especially um, uh, the men in the audience um, likely will this was a trailer and now I want to see the whole movie. So how do I do that? I know you guys don't have a movie. <laughs> Again, making analogies. Yeah. But um, let's talk about where do I get the book? And then what else can I do? What does your ministry do? I know Chris, as we said, Chris invited yeah. me to a weekend. What, yeah. what are some steps that I can take if something has resonated with me today yeah. outside of probably getting down on my knees and, and spending some time with God? Yeah. But I think, again, we all still need that recipe. We're making stew and none of us have a clue what we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. If there was a YouTube video, we'd go find it. <laughs> but there's right. not. And so what, what, is your, what is your pathway now? If I'm listening to this, what's my pathway? So you can, you can go to our website, zoe, Z-O-W-E-H dot org, zoe dot org. And, and you can order the book there. There's a journal workbook that kind of lets you slow it down even more nice. and kind of interact with God. Yep. And, and your heart, search your heart and, uh, and, and put some pen to paper. Um, you can get it on Amazon. Um, it's on the audible, uh, platforms, uh, audio book platforms. You can pick it up Kindle. So all of that is heart of heart of a warrior. Um, and then, um, the, the thing about our website is there's some other resources there that are free. You can, you can raid the cabinet. You know, we've yeah, tried to put awesome. audio and video there. Um, we, we collaborated with YouVersion, the YouVersion Bible app, um, a couple of years ago. So they have Heart of a Warrior devotionals. Nice. You can sign up for their reading plans. And if you have the Bible app, YouVersion Bible app, you just, you know, go to their daily reading plans and look and just type in Heart of a Warrior and you'll, and, or Zoe, even better, Z-O-W-E-H, Zoe, and you'll get our, I think we have six there now. Awesome. So you can, you can walk in those. Um, some of them are excerpts from the book some from search and rescue and others just devotionals that we've created there, but that's a great way to begin to explore with us, you know, 
who you are in the kingdom. It's yeah. so good and it's so cool. Um, it's it's better than you can imagine. And and yeah. isn't that what we have longed for? Isn't yeah. that what we want? So, you know, there's hope. There's yeah. hope. And uh, taking that step in that direction. Uh, this this year, the Aaron, I don't know what's going to happen with conferences, you know, retreats and weekends. I mean, we're still in a very, um, yeah, it, it's, there's sanctions on it. You know, there's, there's still this cloud of, of, um, of things. So we'll see what happens with vaccines and different stuff, but we have one scheduled May 1st is the next encounter weekend, uh, Heart of a Warrior encounter weekend. So um, maybe we have enough runway yeah. to see that to see that happen um and uh, that'll be in virginia so we have a east and then in the fall we'll do west in colorado we partner with young life camps and uh, to take over those with a bunch of yahoo's wild men that's and awesome. they're, they're a great place so that's yeah that's all on our website too you can find okay. out more about that stuff awesome this has been special and you know, I, I, I've learned in my life that Chris Masson's a pretty smart guy. <laughs> and um, anytime I've, I've hitched my wagon to his <laughs> or trailer to his pickup, whatever, I don't know, whatever that, that phrase is, yeah. uh, I, I haven't gone wrong. And any friend of his is a friend of mine. And, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for your time. I'm thankful for this oh, book. And I do you. promise you, I am going to, to finish it. I apologize that I did not get through it before this. Um, uh, life just has a funny way of throwing us some curveballs, yeah. but uh, I will get through this and I can't wait to uh, maybe unpack it even more with you. Um, yeah, I'd love to have another conversation. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And, we, and we've got some, we've got a lot of friend and allies, friends and allies around the country. And so, Good. you know, if, if, if somebody's looking for friends and allies, maybe in their neck of the woods, um, so many thousands of men have registered, registered their book, become allies. So um, I'd want men to know you don't have to be alone, especially with this culture right now, right. zooming and you know connecting this way is uh, has gotten a lot of has gotten a lot of mileage for us. Where yeah. staying disconnected was not a good idea. Yeah. But we'll be back. I'm sure I'll be in Ohio sometime, and awesome. that'll be that'll be a blast to uh, connect. Maybe connect with you there. But love what you're doing, man. And thank you. Keep doing it. These platforms and these environments that you're creating for good good things to be talked talked about explored i, right. I applaud it i think you're thank doing you. a great job aaron real well done really good thank stuff you. at unscripted yeah thank you and and the respect is uh, is very mutual um just just this conversation that people are having this conversation it's an important one and as you said i i, I was thinking as you were talking you know if 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 i coach basketball um and i started at a young age and there's a kid that walks in the gym and he just can't make a jump shot or he can't make a free throw and, and, you know, you work with them and you work with them and you work with them because you know in him is the ability to make a free throw. And then one day he makes that free throw and then he makes another one. Then he makes another one. He makes another one. That's like for a coach, that's the win. And I have to think your win for the people that you work with when they realize you can make free throws or they realize in this case you are a warrior and yeah. you are loved. Man, that's that's a game changing moment. No, no pun intended. Yeah. Free throws won't get you into heaven, but understanding um, that you can set your family on a better path and you can be a yeah. better, you know, all the, all yeah. the things that all that comes with as a coach, quote unquote, um, I have to think that that's such a win and so awesome. And so I'm so thankful that you're doing this work. Yeah. The, the, to see a man restored, it's going to leak into every relationship in every area. So yeah. You know, you can shoot at being a better dad, or you can you can uh, you know try to be a better husband. But if if you can walk with God and learn how to walk with God in in being who you are in the kingdom, you're going to be a better dad, and yeah. you'll be a better you'll be a better husband. We found that that that's the secret sauce, right? Hundred percent. <laughs> so ex experiencing and encountering the love of God for yourself will transform you. Yeah, and to get everything out of the way that's in the way of being loved by him that's something that we actually get to participate in yeah i think he'll give a couple poofs and a couple free ones and a couple he'll do he'll do it for you but there's something that he wants from a man yeah uh and and, and it's engagement with him to trust and and walk with him for our freedom it, we, we're, we are free but but we need to claim it and we need to walk in the claim of our of our freedom and our true identity. So that's where I think this this um, idea that um, you know when when dad gets his heart back, the whole team wins. Absolutely.
when a man, I mean, when a man gets his heart back, the whole team wins. Hundred percent, husband, all that. And so I love that you're creating spaces for conversations like this. It's been an honor. Well, you have a, a uh, open invite any other time. I promise I'll get through this, and I'm probably going to follow up with you on my thoughts um, as all I right. go. And and maybe one of these days we'll see me, Chris, and you know, we'll, and you will. Yeah, that would be fun. That'd that would be, awesome. be fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll raise a glass. We'll raise a glass. Yes. All right. There's Thank me. Thanks so much. God bless all in all you're doing. Take care. Thanks. Bye.